In this video presentation, we're going to look at the new InfoWorks ICM Risk Master tool. Traditionally, flood management policies have been based on design standard approaches, where we design for a degree of protection to be achieved. Now, in contrast, flood management policies that are based on risk tend to focus on the consequence of a flood event and the best alleviation measures that can be achieved over a given period of time. InfoWorks ICM Risk Master takes into account all types of events and they are based on their probability of occurrence. It combines the inundation results of multiple events with a database of damage receptors or properties and their vulnerability and this is based on the probability of occurrence. The outcome is an estimate of the economic impact of floods in terms of an estimated annual damage value and also a database of inundation depths ordered by return period showing the predicted occurrence for each property or damage receptor. These results provide a comprehensive view of the hydraulic system and its performance and the consequence of flood events. Taking two examples from around the globe, flood risk analysis in the United Kingdom is generally based on the Environment Agency's National Receptor Database, which links to Master Map and also the Multicolored Handbook. In the USA, it's slightly more complicated, with the offering tending to be the very detailed and highly specialized HEC FIA. So let's have a look at how risk can be managed within InfoWorks ICM. The new Risk Master tool allows us to uh, do the analysis using a combination of existing modelled information and new database objects. In particular, we need two new uh, items in the actual model network. We have a damage receptor. These are essentially points in the network and usually relate to properties. And we have damage curves. These are non-geographic items held in the main database tree and relate the depths of flooding and duration to a damage value. The software will then conduct a risk calculation and it will combine the tree objects and process those with the hydraulic results that were produced. Now the creation and manipulation of those new damage receptors and damage curves can all be done with a standard InfoWorks ICM license, but the actual risk calculation requires an InfoWorks ICM Risk Master license. So let's have a look at how those objects are put into the database. Damage receptors, as I said, typically are points, but they relate to properties, and it's the properties that will flood, and we therefore need to calculate our risk for that flood event. So the points in the network will be added in either manually or by, by creating a point for each property at risk, or more likely will come in from a database of receptors um, such as uh, property points or perhaps uh, areas of interest. The damage curves are typically imported from CSV files, um, although obviously they can, the information can be entered manually, but those CSV files will essentially be uh, outputs uh, in terms of the multicolored handbook. Uh, if you're using the multicolored handbook for your analysis, that comes with an associated CD-ROM, and CD-ROM allows you to produce these CSV files. And those CSV files can be as simple as a curve for a residential property or a commercial property, or be as detailed as defining not only the property type, a detached house or a semi-detached house or a flat or a bungalow, but also the age of that um, property and also the social class of anybody living in that property. You can import as many or as few of these files into a table of uh, damage functions and each one of those functions uh, will be defined in a grid view as you can see on the screen and each one of those items um, can then be graphed showing the relationship between the depths of inundation and the uh, associated financial damage. Now there are also two new model build processes that go with InfoWorks ICM Risk Master. The first is to assign the uh, 2D elements in the 2D mesh to the damage receptors that we've added and this needs to be done before a hydraulic simulation. We need to do that because the damage receptors are points, whereas our items of interest are typically properties and they will of course be represented usually as polygons. And that property itself will be surrounded by any number of 2D triangles or 2D elements. And it's the elements that need to eventually relate back to the receptors. I'll show you an example of that in just a moment. With the uh, assignment of elements to damage receptors done, the final task is then to um, allocate the damage curves, which we looked at in the previous screenshot, um, to those damage receptors. 
This again is a pre-processing step um, and it's completely independent of the uh, hydraulic results and uh, any simulation and is essentially unique for each network and set of damage curves that you have. So to go back to that first point about the assignment of elements to damage receptors, we can see here uh, an example of a property shown in the uh, slightly grey colour and that property has inside it a damage receptor. And what we have done is to link the damage receptor to the property and then the property to each of the 2D elements that either are inside it, because this is a porous polygon being used to represent this property, so there are two triangles with inside it, and also the four triangles that are touching the boundary of the property itself. And that assignment process is actually done as a second stage uh, to the meshing process. So we use the normal model meshing menu. Uh, and once we've defined our mesh in the first place, we then use the third item on the list and actually assign 2D elements to that particular damage receptor. And we can see visually to make sure that that's been done by using one of the new property items on the geo plan under the visual tab. And at the bottom of that uh, page there is a new item with a checkbox and it simply allows us to highlight uh, all the elements that are particularly associated with one damage receptor. So in this particular case if we look at our screenshot we can see there are in fact six elements uh, associated with that one damage receptor all shown with a slightly red outline. With that assignment done the last task is to simply define the type of property that our damage receptor relates to. And as I said earlier, this can be a very detailed description of property, age and social class, or it can just be a very straightforward and very simple definition, residential or commercial. Uh, and within those definitions, you can go into detail as to whether those properties have basements or not. In this particular case, um, we've got a situation where we uh, don't have any basements and the, this is a simple residential property. So we can see the curve representing the uh, likely financial damage um, in pounds per square meter against the depth of flooding uh, that might occur in that property. So with the data set built up, it's now time to do our simulation. The core of the analysis is obviously the standard 2D hydraulic simulation, but the risk calculations are then post-processed after that has been done. So we do our calculation of our hydraulic result and as well as calculating the uh, numbers uh, as you would have done in the past, there are new results relating specifically to those damage receptors. And those new results will only be put into the results file if you have a risk master license. With that done, we then can calculate our damages. This is a post-processing run, it's done after the simulation and uh, again you can only do it if you have a risk master license. Then finally, we do the actual calculation of risk which again is a post-processing run. It's done based on the damage calculations of the previous step. And again, it's only available if you have a risk master license. So let's have a look at how that is all done. As I said, we will have done our hydraulic calculation anyway as our first part of the process. And now we are going to do a new risk analysis run. So we can do right click new risk run uh, from our database tree. It will pop up a dialog which will allow us to um, drop in our damage functions. Uh, that's the data we imported, for example, from the multicolored handbook relating to our property types, residential, commercial, age of property, the curves that go with that. So we drop in all that information uh, as a drag and drop off the tree. And then we also drag in our um, hydraulic results that we previously calculated into the dialog as well and hit run simulation. Now in this particular case this is a risk simulation and it can be done on our local computer or if we're part of a work group it can be outsourced and put onto one of the remote machines. The actual calculations themselves uh, simply involve multiplying the damage result for each of your receptors with the probability of occurrence for the event that you simulated. And the results of a risk calculation are essentially an expected annual damage value or EAD value and that will be reported for each property and also a depth and probability of exceedance curve for each receptor as well. The outputs themselves um, can be tabulated uh, and of course they can also be themed in the GeoPlan view. Damage results of monetary values are essentially reported per simulation and per receptor and the risk results are per risk run and per receptor and that will produce you an EAD value and a depth and probability of exceedance curve for each of the receptors. 
The damage and the risk results are tabulated in both CSV format and HTML formats. So let's have a look at the uh, last one of those, the HTML output. This is one of the standard uh, output grids that you can have. And in this particular case, we're looking at total damages over all receptors. So everything has been totaled up. We can see the table clearly shows us the return period of the event down the uh, left-hand side of the table, uh, the duration of each of those events across the top of the table. The event probability is defined in a column in its own right. And the result of um, multiplying together those various uh, outputs is an annual damage value for each of the return periods and then an estimated annual damage value by tabulating uh, everything in that particular column. Or we could look at tables showing us uh, inundation depths. And in this particular case, we would probably show it as a receptor value versus the return period. So the numbers down the left-hand side of the table are the property IDs, property indicators. Um, across the top of the table, we have our return period in years. And then we can see our inundation depth for each of our um, five properties that we have listed uh, against each of the six return periods in that particular analysis. These outputs essentially show the behavior of the system against the spectrum of events. And it makes it very easy to understand if the risk is a contribution that comes from low return period events or long duration storms. Also, the results table is done for each component used in the damage calculations. And this can allow you to compare the contributions from different parts of the model and different components of the model. So in the example we used earlier, looking at the difference between residential and commercial, or perhaps between commercial and industrial, or between properties of different age, or between different social classes of people living in those properties. Tables are great, and they give you a good picture of what's going on. But if you can visualize everything together, uh, hydraulic results and risk analysis all together, that can give a much stronger uh, impression of the problem that you have or the potential success of any solutions. And the visualization can be achieved by exporting that uh, CSV information we looked at just now and importing it as uh, data items, new data items uh, for each of the uh, fields you have in your model, so your building polygons and your damage receptors, and you can then use that to create a theme. And you can see an example of that uh, in the two little screenshots that we have below, where I've uh, shown the water that's flowing down the roads. The properties are currently in pink, but if they experience flooding, they will change color. The color to which they change uh, is dependent on the return period. So uh, anywhere between uh, a pink color for a five year return period to a green color for a 100 year return period. We can also um, highlight uh, particular return period criticalities with uh, labels or looking at the highest EAD value by uh, putting a series of concentric rings. Now, at the moment, there is a manual process that uh, involves taking that uh, original CSV output, uh, bring it into the GeoPlan view and then creating your theme. We will be making that fully integrated within the next release of InfoWorks ICM. The current mechanism allows you to produce some very uh, informative outputs where we can look at combination of tables and graphical outputs all in the GeoPlan at the same time. So as an example here, looking at inundation depths, the uh, again blue representing the uh, hydraulic result from the InfoWorks ICM standard 2D calculations, and then also comparing that with the subsequent post-processing done by InfoWorks ICM RiskMaster. So we got again our critical return periods uh, and using that to color the various properties at risk of flooding. We are showing the actual flood volumes um, um, coming out which uh, allow us to uh, show the uh, properties that most risk uh, in terms of that uh, inundation depth and then the uh, table showing us the inundation depths for each of the receptors against each of the return periods. And in this particular case, a much larger list of properties we can see here. And then finally, in the middle of the screenshot, just again, looking at the standard hydraulic result of um, depths uh, of, of water re reported by the 2D analysis. Changing that picture very slightly, um, but again, looking at the same sort of things, uh, table here showing the damage for a particular receptor, uh, in this case, tabulating the uh, various return periods that were used in the analysis, um, all of which were a 60 minute duration storm. We can see the probability of each of those storms, the annual damage associated with each of those storms, and the estimated annual damage um, by totaling up everything in that particular table. And we've done that for a couple of the uh, particular receptors we're interested in there. Uh, and then finally, in the bottom right-hand corner of the uh, GeoPlan view, we're looking at the uh, damages as a relationship between the code and the component. So we're looking at residential and commercial. 
and properties with and without a basement value. So uh, again, that table is totaled up by row and also by uh, row and column to give us the total value in the bottom right hand corner. So hopefully that gives you a nice idea of the sort of things that we can do with InfoWorks ICM Risk Master and how we go about um, taking our existing InfoWorks ICM 2D models and turning them into risk models.